Okay, so after power cycling our PC, our router, and our modem, we're magically able to establish an internet connection. Well, how did that work? The reason that works so well is because I'm using a cable modem which receives a DHCP address from my internet service provider. Just so happens that on this router, and in most routers that you'll buy, that is your default configuration to automatically receive a DHCP address from your ISP. If that's not the case with your internet service provider, you simply go to the internet setup section or in some routers it may be called WAN for wide area network and select either a static IP address or a DSL connection. Static IP address, you simply type in the internet IP address, gateway, and DNS servers provided to you by your internet service provider. Now unless this router is being used for commercial purposes in which case your company has paid for a static IP address and domain name you probably will never use this setting. Besides DHCP the next most popular configuration for a home network router is PPOE which means point-to-point -point protocol over Ethernet. And that is used for DSL connections, which is basically a phone line. Since it's a phone line, there are no real IP addresses involved. What's involved is a username and a password, and in some cases, a service name. Your internet service provider will provide you with all this information. Once you have it, it's a simple matter of typing it in, and you're done. In some cases, there may be a host name and domain involved, but in most cases, you don't have to worry about that. For the time being, we want to use our maximum transmission unit size to auto. You don't want to change this unless you have to. So we've got an internet setup side and a network setup side. But what's the difference? The internet setup side basically connects the internet side of our router to our internet service provider. On some routers, this will be called the WAN, or Wide Area Network side. Then we have the Network Setup side, which is our LAN, or Local Area Network Setup. Basically, the parameters we want to be concerned with in here is what is the local IP address to our router, which we can change if we so desire. You don't really want to fool with subnet masks too much, because that can get strange. Then, if we want to use this router as a DHCP server, which in most cases we do unless we have other routers on our network we can leave this as enabled. Now this may look a little different on other routers. What we have here is we have the ability to configure our pool of IP addresses on our DHCP server. In the case of this router the IP address pool is 192.168.1.100 to 150 now there have been times when I've set up an internal DNS server which I preferred to use over DNS servers provided to me on the internet. So what I did was I entered that information in here. Win server is not something you really have to worry about unless you're on a corporate network. So once you have all this set up, any computer or any network device that gets an IP address from this router will automatically be configured with all these parameters. If we leave all these settings alone, our DNS server, our internet gateway, and our DHCP server, and our IP settings will all be set to our router's IP interface, which is 192.168.1.1. Now if we make any configuration changes, we want to make sure that we hit save settings before moving on to another page, otherwise our settings will all be lost. Now before we move on I want to make sure that this is changed to Eastern Time. I just want to change this to something else. So I'm going to hit Save Settings. And now we can continue on to other sections.